Okay, this is a paddlefish. We just caught it here in Forest Home Chute, uh, a uh, backwater off the lower Mississippi River. There are only two species of paddlefish in the world, one in the Yangtze River in China, the other in the Mississippi River here in North America. The Yangtze River species is probably extinct. We don't want that, of course, to happen to paddlefish, so we put a lot of effort into conserving them. Paddlefish are a living fossil. They are one of our most primitive uh, bony fishes. These green-gray spots are clusters of electroreceptors, and they're called ampullae of Lorenzini. That was for the discoverer back in the 1700s. These detect the electricity generated by the prey of the paddlefish. And in fact, the paddlefish is so sensitive to electrical disturbances in the water that it will avoid metal objects, and it will zero in on planktonic prey like water fleas and copepods. These ampullae of Lorenzini, or electroreceptors, go all the way along the rostrum, or this bill, the bill that gives the paddlefish its name, uh, and its other name, spoonbill catfish. Of course, it's not a catfish. It takes the uh, paddle, zeroes in on clouds of plankton, then drops its trapdoor-like mouth. And in fact, the paddlefish is unusual. It and sturgeon are the only vertebrates whose, whose jaw is, is free-floating. It doesn't attached to the skull. Paddlefish also have a structure shared with sharks called a spiracle. That is this um, pit right here. This is an opening that goes directly into the opercular or the gill chamber and it, it facilitates water exchange. If you look down into the mouth of the paddlefish, you'll notice that it has very well-developed gills with pointed tooth-like projections called gill rakers. These gill rakers are long enough and spaced closely enough that they literally comb the zooplankton out of the water, which makes the bulk of the paddlefish's diet. Also, very interesting on, on paddlefish is their third eye. This is a, uh, an open spot in their skull with a thin, translucent, cartilaginous window across it. And here you can see it's about the size of my fingernail. This is not, it, it has many of the structures of an eye. It has a, a photoreceptive layer. In some animals, there's a rudimentary lens. There are, it's, it's, it's a working photoreceptor in that it detects light, light intensity, shadows, and movement, but it does not actually form an image. And uh, one of the great mysteries in zoology for, for years and years is why do paddlefish and a lot of reptiles and why did dinosaurs have these third eyes? And there, there were a, a bunch of theories, but now the most reasonable one seems to be that it is a dosimeter. That is, it tells the paddlefish how much sunlight is coming into a, a particular system and it can cue seasonal changes in things like uh, gonadal development and reproductive activity. What's interesting about paddlefish is they don't really conform to any of the shapes of other fish in our, in our uh, country. They have an accelerator type morphology, that is they are flat along the top with a uh, dorsal fin that is rear of center of the body and then they, um, with this, this tends to give them the ability to have fast starts. On the other hand, they have a deeply forked tail and a very small peduncle or muscular part of the tail. And this is very characteristic of a cruiser type morphology, which is high speeds uh, for sustained periods of time. But in fact, they don't normally swim very quickly. They typically swim at about two body lengths per second, but they are capable of attaining some very high velocities because paddlefish can become airborne. They're one of the, the few fish in this country that can actually uh, completely emerge from the water and leap high into the air. They do that very much like, like silver carp, but they, they don't do it at an angle like carp do. They tend to do it vertically and they come straight up out of the water. Obviously the most important uh, and the most conspicuous anatomical structure on the paddlefish is its paddle or bill. Uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, it's studded with all these electroreceptors that makes it one of the most sensitive sensory structures among vertebrates. Uh, it also 
uh, changes quite a bit in size. Small paddlefish have, have, very small paddlefish have none. As they grow, it grows faster than the body and becomes quite large. And then as they become adults, it becomes relatively shorter. But still at this size, the, the rostrum is still pretty large and pretty pronounced and has a very interesting skeletal structure. Uh, the endoskeleton of the paddlefish rostrum consists of a lattice-like network of ossified cartilaginous elements. These are called stellate bones because they look like little stars. It makes it extremely lightweight, it's extremely complex, and the military is showing a lot of interest now in this structure. If you look at the paddlefish paddle, it appears to be very solid, and, and in fact it's relatively rigid. It's not real hard, but it, it feels like a very hard uh, natural rubber but this is what the skeleton looks like in reality. Uh, very complex, uh, a, almost a rhomboidal in cross-section type of, of structure with, with two prominent flat layers, uh, long cartilaginous rods that support them, and then, as we mentioned, this, this, this matrix or this, this uh, lattice of all of these small bones. We're gonna go ahead and let them go just where we caught them. I'm not gonna let them go right away. Paddlefish are ram ventilators and they need to have water pushed over their gills to breathe. They can't actually ventilate the way that most fish do. So to kind of give them a, a little bit of a healthy start, I'm aerating his gills, pushing him through the water. We do this routinely when we catch paddlefish, especially if we've had to hold them for more than just a few minutes. And he seems to be doing okay. And we're gonna go ahead and let him go. starting to move and he's swimming off.